Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about graph functions using reflections about the x and y axis. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help to use Minute Math. So what about reflections, okay? Well, we've all know the basic reflection of you look into a mirror, and it kind of looks back at you, and it's mirrored, hence the term, right? So how do we do reflections in a graph? We can do them based off the x-axis and the y-axis, really about any line, but we won't get to that right now. So look at this image here. We have our original function f of x, which is in blue. It's a solid blue line, and it swoops up to the right. It looks like there's a horizontal asymptote on the y-axis. Okay. Well, let's look at the first one here. There's a red line pointing to the horizontal reflection, which is a dotted orange line. That's f of negative x. And that occurs when we take our x values and we turn them into a negative x values. Okay? And that's going to have that horizontal reflection looking part. The vertical reflection is about the x axis here. And it's the negative on the outside of f of x, and we have that teal color right there. And that's a vertical reflection of f of x there. And that's the same as negative f of x. Okay? So we have a little definition here for you. Reflections. Given a function f of x, a new function g of x equals a negative f of x is a vertical reflection of the function f of x, sometimes called the reflection about or over or through the x-axis. Given a function f of x, a new function g of x equals f of negative x is a horizontal reflection of the function f of x, sometimes called a reflection about the y-axis. Okay? All right, so let's go dive into an example here. Okay, number nine. We're reflecting a graph horizontally and vertically. We want to reflect the graph of s of t, and it's equal to the square root of t. We're going to do that a vertically, okay, and b horizontally. Okay. All right. So let's start with a right here. We want to reflect that vertically. So we have our function, the square root function, notice there, square root of t. So s is the square root of t. Well, v of t, notice we're reflecting that vertically, so it's over the x, or the t-axis here. Kind of flips down below, and we can see that there, okay? So here, notice though, so v of t, the vertical reflection, is equal to a negative s of t, okay? Or v of t, we can write as such as a negative square root of t, and that's how we really represent that equation. All right, so B here is a horizontally or horizontal reflection. So that's going to be over the Y axis, or in this case, let's call it H of T. Notice the graph is almost mirrored over the horizontal axis. So H of T is S of negative T as far as the equation goes, and we can write that also as H of T equals the square root of negative T right there okay notice for these graphs the domains can change the ranges could change etc maybe be careful with that while you're making a new graph see what those domains and ranges are all right so I'm gonna erase this and we'll dive into the next example okay so now we're going to um, learn about reflecting a tabular function horizontally and vertically. We have g of x, all right, so we have a function f of x in this table right here, and we want to find a first is when g of x, find that table, is equal to negative f of x, all right? So what we want to do is we're going to take the output of f of x and really just put on a negative there, okay, negate that. So we can see that in our table here. Notice there that, well, our x values are the same, 2, 4, 6, and 8, but the negative f of x values, which is equal to g of x, is negative 1, negative 3, negative 7, and negative 11. The same here, right, same f of x values, but there's a negative added to each one of those. Okay. 
The next one is a little tricky, b, h of x. We want to make a table here, h of x equals f of negative x. So in this case here, on our table, we're changing the x values. We're going to negate the x values, make them all negative, so we have negative 2, 4, 6, and 8, and those produce the same outputs as f of x did, 1, 3, 7, and 11 there. So that's where that's a little tricky, okay? Tricky when you're negating on the inside there. The negative values switched, all right, on the x thing, right? We put negatives on the x values, but the f of x values are the same, which are now h of x, okay? Let me erase this and we'll keep on going. All right, so this example here is applying a learning model equation. A common model for learning has an equation similar to k of t equals a negative 2 to the negative t power plus 1, where k is the percentage of mastery that can be achieved after t practice sessions. This is a transformation of the function f of t equals 2 to the t power, and we want to sketch the graph of k of t. So our f of t we can see here in this graph. That's our f of t function, the 2 to the t power there. But we want to sketch what's k of t here. Okay, so the few things we want to get around and see maybe apply. So if f of t, so we, we want to graph this, okay. If we have f of t right there, a horizontal reflection is f of negative t, which is 2 to the negative t power. Okay, so we got that aspect down. A vertical reflection Okay, vertical reflection is applying that to the negative on the outside. So the negative f of negative t, okay, so we have now a negative 2 to the negative t power. Almost there. Keep on going. We're moving down through the steps here. A vertical shift, vertical shift is represented by a negative f of negative t plus 1 which is equal to, I'll put it right here below it, negative 2 to the negative t plus 1, and we have that equation, which is that k of t right there. So we can see that in our graphs right here. Notice the first one, f of t, then we're reflecting that, okay, reflecting that over, um, or sorry, uh, <laughs> The first is the horizontal reflection, excuse me, horizontal reflection. Then we have the vertical reflection, so that's me over the t-axis, that's part B. So A, B, like this A, B, and then we have C. The vertical shift occurs, and then we move up plus one units. So it's kind of hard, it takes practice to keep doing that and seeing that, of uh, that vertical and uh, or the reflections of the x and y-axis, and now even applying a vertical shift of that. I hope you learned something in this lesson. If you did, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. And as always, thanks for watching. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. MinuteMathTutor.com